We have just arrived in Guangzhou. Very We're actually going to get an upgrade to a suite. There's another bathroom. We have our roast meat. I'm missing the words to describe it. I have to say it's not my favorite. No. Hello from Sanya, the beautiful Sanya. But unfortunately, the weather here has kind of turned in the last few days and the forecast for the next week is not looking promising. So we thought we'd actually cut our stay here short, which is good and bad. It's bad because I actually have not tried pretty much any of the major food specialties here in Hainan. I mean, I've been in Hainan for five days now and haven't even had Hainan chicken rice. But you know, there's gonna be more trips to Hainan in the future, so I'm sure I'm gonna make up for that. But in the meantime, what have we decided to do? Well, we've actually booked us a flight to brrr, Guangzhou. It'll be Diaok's first time there. So that's the plan for today. Let's go to Guangzhou. We have just arrived in Guangzhou. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Do you know what's ahead of you in terms of food? Uh, like, I have no idea. Oh but my gosh. It's, it's the cap food capital no, of China. One of them. Yeah. I don't want to make anyone upset uh, here. When it comes to Guangzhou, of course, there's only one person that I trust taking us around. And that's, of course, everyone's favorite guest, Peter! Hey, I'm back! <laughs> <laughs> so we are en route to the hotel and uh, Peter has actually pulled some strings for us because he is a elite member at the Marriott. So we're Crazy. actually going to get an upgrade to a suite! What the heck? <laughs> this is my first time in my life ever staying in a suite. It's and so uh, It's going to be Doug's birthday coming up in a few days. So, oh my goodness. Peter, you're the best. You're best. If I have one wish for any of you guys watching this is that you find yourself a Peter in Guangzhou. <laughs> It's also Doug's first time visiting the city, so it was super interesting seeing his first impressions of this Chinese mega city. Like just from sitting inside a taxi and just looking outside, it's crazy. Like I can't wait to walk around. And that will be what we're gonna do right afterwards. First step is of course checking into our amazing suite here at the Marriott. I'm very excited. <laughs> Me too. I have no idea what to expect or what this is gonna look like. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you our suite. Oh my. <laughs> Goodness, there's a sitting room. And around the corner in a separate room, we have the bedroom. I mean, you know your hotel is fancy when it has what? more than one room. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen a bathroom so big. There's only one of the bathroom. There's another bathroom? Come here. Why would we need two? So we have two bathrooms, just casually, for the guests, you know. Yeah, just all the, the guests. guests. And as for the view... Oh my goodness. The hotel's smack bang in the middle of Tianhe District. It's the modern central business district of Guangzhou. Tonight, we're walking down the road from the hotel to one of Peter's go-to Cantonese restaurants, where Doc's going to be getting his first ever taste of Cantonese food. Of course, we're letting Peter take the reins when it comes to the ordering. This is a real moment, your first ever Cantonese meal. <laughs> This is like my go-to place to take, you know, friends who have never been to Guangzhou. Oh. Let's cheers to that with cheers. Uh, some... Is this Hong Cha? It's a Puar Cha. Ah, <laughs> but a moment of appreciation for Duff's expanding Mandarin vocabulary. Something is coming. Oh, first dish has already arrived. What is this, Kata? <laughs> well, yes, I can see that. A pork soup Ooh. with goji berries and lotus seed. And then we also believe that, you know, different ingredients in different kind of soup can have different effects to your body. I was told lotus seeds are good for getting rid of the toxins in your body and goji berries are good for warming up the body. Perfect for winter. Well, at least as close to winter as it's going to get here in Guangzhou. So it's yeah. technically winter here in uh, in Guangzhou, but it's uh, still very nice and warm. <laughs> I'm still wearing shorts here. Yeah. <laughs> because Guangzhou is in the far south of China, the winters are a far cry from the chilly northern regions. Just as a reference, Chongchun is currently minus 18 right now. Anyway, let's try some of that soup. Oh, that is so good. Super warming. I love a soup like this. It reminds me of my grandma. And of course, a Cantonese meal can't truly begin without a soup. So consider this meal officially begun. We've got our first main arriving now. It's braised lamb in clay pot, which was very interesting to see because I've really never seen lamb in Cantonese cuisine before. Well, in Cantonese cuisine, we're not known for lamb, except for winter. Because lamb, according to us, it has a mild warming property. If we have it in summer, that will like add too much of warmth to our body, and then we will not feel good. With that being said, it's time to warm up our bodies with some of this Cantonese-style lamb. Is it good? So soft. You don't really have to bite. It's like falling apart. Mm. Mm. Oh. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like a musum and curry in that fact that it has like a lot of spices in it. You've got, I, I'm tasting like star anise and five spice, a little, maybe even a bit of cinnamon in there. It's really like rich 
but not heavy. For our next main, we've got a fish dish, and Derek looks like a kid on Christmas. It's an entire fresh flatfish on a bed of ginger and garlic. And that smell you would not believe. Look at this, like, look how succulent and amazing that looks. And it smells so gingery. Oh, also super tender, that fish, very delicate, gingery. And you can actually see under here, underneath the fish, you've got so much ginger. Also a lot of garlic as well here. Oh my gosh, Amy, your favorite dish has come. Oh my goodness, what is this wonder of a platter here? We have <laughs> our roast meat. One is the crispy chasu, which is made from the fatty part of the pork. And another one is like the regular chasu. We also have some roast goose over here, which you guys know I'm obsessed with. And over here we have a palate cleanser of pear. First up, I'm gonna try this crispy chasu, which I have never tried before. Oh, it smells like fatty and sugary. Mm. Oh, wow. That's so amazing because you've got the fattiness on the inside, you've got the crunchiness on the outside, which is like very sugary, but then you've also got this saltiness that comes through as well. It's like the perfectly balanced piece of meat. And now I'm going to try some of this uh, regular char siu. And just by looking at it, I know it's going to be good because it's caramelized on the outside. It looks really juicy and really tender. Wow. So tender and sweet. Mm. Actually, I don't think Derp, you have never tried char siu before, right? No. So obviously we had to rectify that situation ASAP. You like it? I'm missing the words to describe it. It's... <laughs> my love also tried my other love, Roast Goose, for the first time, and it looks like we're gonna be one big happy family. I think we have to extend our stay. <laughs> <laughs> I was also very curious to try this palate cleanser here. I do have to admit, after a lot of these roast meats and like heavier flavored dishes, I do feel like I need a little bit of a palate cleanser, and this is a palate cleanser I haven't had before. This is um, pear marinated in red wine, you told me. Um, usually when it comes to palate cleansers, it's like a, I don't know, a plum sauce or, you know, pickled radish. So I'm really interested to see how that feels. Oh. Mm. Crunchy and very sweet. It almost tastes like a candy. And yeah, as promised, I'm ready for round two. Let's go in for another piece of char siu. It's almost better when it cools down a bit, actually, because when fat is hot, it's just like really juicy. It's almost like a liquid. But then when it cools down a bit, like, you know, when you have a fatty soup and the next day you've got that layer of fat on the, on the top and it like solidifies. When it gets colder, I feel like it solidifies a little bit. So it has a little bit more of like a firmness inside. And also like the crunchiness of the outside is even more exacerbated. Next dish to arrive is a tofu dish. You'll notice a lot of these dishes are served in clay pots, which is another characteristic feature of Cantonese cuisine. Is that sea cucumber or is yes. this? Yes. yes. That's oh. your friend, sea yeah. cucumber. Let's get some are of you, that on there. Are you there. dropped on the carpet? You have too good a memory. <laughs> oh, hashtag sorry not sorry. And auf Deutsch, es tut mir gar nicht leid. So sieht's aus, meine Freunde. Uh-oh, uh-oh, don't drop it, don't drop it in front of Peter. Yeah, there we go. This tofu inside is so soft, it just, my spoon just sliced through it. Super, super tasty, and like everything else on our table, super warming, and above all, seasonal. I love that about Cantonese food. We ended the meal with a good old carb injection in the form of fried rice. I've never seen such a brown fried rice. I learned that this fried rice is full of not just rice, but dried scallops, which I just know is going to give this a huge umami hit. I feel like usually you get rice as like a nice palate cleanser, but this is almost like the opposite. It's so salty and so umami. It's such like a bang of flavor in your face. Quite possibly the most flavorful fried rice I've ever had in my life. And while the meal was more on the expensive side, at least we had unlimited Puar tea refills. It's the perfect beverage to stimulate those digestive juices to break down all that fatty char siu I've eaten tonight. But as Peter would say, hashtag sorry not sorry. So we are now en route to our dessert place and I'm really, really excited about what we're gonna be getting. So you may remember when I was in Guangxi making those videos, I made a video showing like the differences and similarities between Guangxi food and Guangdong food. Cause there's a lot of similarities between the two because they're two provinces side by 
dry side. And for dessert that day, I had something called tang shui, which literally means sugar water. I had the Guangxi version and it was really delicious. It had corn in it, it had sweet potato in it. It was amazing. Um, but Guangdong also has its own version. So Peter is gonna be taking us to try Guangdong Cantonese style tang shui. Today, Peter's taking us to a super local tang shui place, which is packed wall to wall with people. And while the place may be small, the menu definitely is not. So pretty much like any kind of dessert that is sweet and soupy, you call it tang shui. He's ordered us zhima hu, black sesame paste, xinren hu, almond paste, xiang yu, xi mi lu, taro sago with coconut milk, as well as mi tang liang fen, black and white grass jelly. So the one that is automatically taking my fancy is this taro sago coconut pudding, uh, tang shui I guess I could call it. I love coconutty desserts. Mm. Yum. And that sago is like just that such a nice consistency of my mouth and mm. how's the almond one? It's a very good choice. Yeah? What's it taste like? Almond. <laughs> He's a man of many words. I like the, that it's warm. And also the sweetness. It's not too sweet, but still some sweetness. Probably it's something similar to like a liquid version of, of marzipan. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I try a spoon? Mm. It's good, huh? Yeah, it's, it's good. You're girl of many words. <laughs> I have to say it's not my favorite. No? No, I don't really like the the aftertaste in the back of my throat. Okay. It might be because I've just had some of this, right, which then. is really sweet and coconutty we'll and like very much to my taste. So I, I'm not sure what it is that's not really appealing to me about the almond one, but for me, this is very much down my alley. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm not, I like, I would love to combine this. Why not? Get a bit of that and I'll get a bit of this. Mm. <laughs> Even better when you combine these? Maybe, yeah, maybe I should put one more thing on their menu. I'm very, very intrigued by this black, black depth. Of course, also known as Jamahu. It smells quite earthy. Yeah. Did this uh, sesame with? With sesame. Sesame, sesame with sesame. sesame. <laughs> I think it's just sesame inside. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, you'll like this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Too much sesame. Too much sesame? It's a sesame soup. Next up, we've got the black and white grass jelly. And I have to say, I prefer the taste of the black jelly more. It had a richer flavor, while the white one was a bit on the plainer side. It's almost like a bing fin, but whereas a bing fin is like jelly with like the hong tang syrup on top of it, this is like the jelly with the, the flavor of that sweetness coming from the jelly itself. So yeah, that brings us to the end of our day one Guangzhou food adventure, your first day in Guangzhou and your first time trying Cantonese food. What's your overall impression? I'm uh, I'm blown away. Thanks to Peter, I yeah. was already uh, able to scratch a little bit on the surface of what uh, the Cantonese food has to offer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for the other days. Yeah. So tomorrow we're we're going to Yum Cha. So it's going to be Doug's first ever Yum Cha. And yeah, it's fair to say he loved it. But more on that next video. Thank you so much for everything you've done You're for us, welcome. including the hotel and the amazing dinner and these amazing desserts. Don't forget to, of course, like and comment and most importantly, subscribe. Put those fingers where they need to go, right on that button. Um, yeah, and we will see you next week from here in Guangzhou. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.